Understand the steps of probate in California before listing the probate property. That's our topic today and we'll get started right after this. Before you list a probate property in California, you're going to want to pay attention to these things that you need to be aware of. The probate property that a person leaves behind is known as the decedent's estate. The decedent is the person that died. The estate is the property that they owned when they passed away. To transfer or to inherit property in California when someone passes away, and there isn't a living trust, you typically are going to have to go through a California probate. Hi, I'm Kim Ward. I am a certified probate real estate advisor. My team and I have helped hundreds of executors, administrators, and trustees here in San Diego, California. I'm going to share these three steps all about probate that you need to be aware of prior to listing a probate property. When someone passes away, these will be your first three steps through the process. Step one, figure out who will be the estate representative. Who's going to be the executor or the administrator? If there is a will, much of the time the will will state who the executor will be for the estate. If there isn't a will, then the probate court here in San Diego will appoint an administrator for the estate. If the estate is small, which most estates are not because here in San Diego, I believe the number is $166,000 or 166250 dollars You can avoid a full on probate, but our housing prices are so high here that if your loved one owned a piece of property, they're going to have to go through a full probate. Step two of the probate steps are, as the estate representative, you're going to need to gather a lot of data to give to your probate attorney and to the probate courts. You'll be gathering all this information and you'll have specific duties on handling that information. There's a number of preliminary duties and they include these. You're going to need to take control of the property to safeguard it and protect it and eventually distribute the proceeds from the sale of it or perhaps distribute the actual piece of property to someone that was named as the um, heir. And you're gonna have to address all of the debts. All the debts will need to be paid. For example, if the assets are all in the decedent's home, you're going to wanna be certain that the house is secure. You're also going to want to have gathered any valuables and paperwork and store it in a safe place. You'll need to locate the will if there is one. You're going to want to get multiple certified copies of the death certificate because you're going to need them for some of the duties that you'll be taking care of. You'll need to collect any assets and death benefits. Assets can be bank accounts, life insurance proceeds, any type of annuity benefits, social security benefits, veterans benefits, and more. You're going to want to locate a safe deposit box if there might be one because there could be important information and assets stored in a safe deposit box. You're going to want to collect the decedent's mail and actually it's best if you forward the mail to your residence. You'll need to cancel any credit cards and subscriptions. You're going to need to manage digital assets. These are things like online accounts, photos, things like that. Sometimes there's documents that are stored online that you want to locate also. And you should do your best to obtain access to the email accounts of your loved one. You'll need to notify the Franchise Tax Board of the death. And you'll need to notify the Social Security Administration if your loved one was getting Social Security benefits. And you're going to need to prepare your loved one's taxes, including the final taxes. It's important that you know that these are just some of the steps of probate and you're going to have to take them and more. You're going to want to make sure that you're doing everything that you're responsible, that you've taken on the responsibility to do to take care of this probate in California and eventually to make sure that it gets distributed properly. The steps of probate number three, figure out who the heirs and the beneficiaries are. 
Heirs refers to people that have a right to inherit when someone dies without a will. That's called dying intestate. And beneficiaries are the people that in inherit according to the will. They are kind of somewhat interchangeable and I actually just refer to everyone as beneficiaries. So far, I hope that this information is quite helpful, but we're not done yet. And if you're finding this of value, please do me a favor and like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell button so that you're notified of the weekly videos all about probate. And feel comfortable putting comments. I read all of them and I will respond. So let's continue. Who the heirs or beneficiaries are is usually decided by the terms of the will, state law if there is no will, or sometimes if there is a problem locating the will, or even a problem with the will itself. Other estate planning documents like beneficiary designations, for instance, with a retirement account. Sometimes there are living trusts that are involved in, it's not really in the probate, but you would become responsible for handling those also in many cases. And sometimes there's joint tenancy arrangements. Obviously, it's not always straightforward figuring out who the heirs or beneficiaries are. Even if there is a will, sometimes it's not up to date and perhaps the new spouse isn't included. Or sometimes wills haven't been changed and there's been a divorce. And sometimes in the will there'll be a beneficiary listed and that person has already died. And these are just some of the situations that can kind of muddle things up even more. You may need to speak with an attorney to figure out who the beneficiaries or heirs are. If you are an estate representative, an executor or administrator, please keep in mind you must be trustworthy, act diligently and responsibly. You must always stay informed of your responsibilities. You're going to want to keep good records and communicate with all the people involved. Before the property goes to the right beneficiary, you are responsible and you need to manage the property in the best interest of the heirs or beneficiaries. This is called a fiduciary duty. You have to act responsibly and honestly. If you break your duty, you may be held responsible and that could be holding you personally responsible for any type of loss. Now you are in the position to consider listing the probate in California property. And once you start interviewing real estate professionals, you're going to want to consider a certified probate real estate advisor to get on your team because a certified probate real estate advisor will help you through the process of preparing, marketing, and successfully selling the probate in California. And that's what you want, right? A successful, relatively painless sale, someone to help you through that process. Thank you for watching. I hope this was of value for you and I'll see you next week.